Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Daniel. Samantha is also here. So, uh, you hear about Mars? <laughs> you know, I... Okay. What about it? So, this whole Mars thing, hey, this is the most terrifying and craziest thing ever. It's you. We're we're putting you know a, a thing on the Mars, <laughs> and we're gonna do the thing on the Mars, and you go to your TV and watch the thing, and then I'm like, yeah, I gotta do it. I gotta. And I don't know anything about it. Was too busy to watch. I don't know if anybody said the most terrifying thing you've ever seen. No, no, or... they were saying the the actual guys that were doing it, NASA, mm. whomever, was saying yeah. it is their most terrifying seven minutes of you know. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. were like saying it's the most terrifying seven minutes in history. Yeah, because that's what all, they were kind of touting. It yes, because all the work they spent to get this thing into position. I mean, when did they launch? The, it, it takes years, right? See, I don't. That's the thing I'm embarrassed to, to admit on this radio program is that <clears throat> you and I like to act as if we are actively supportive of space and we're into it and we like science. I feel like you and I should have watched this and should know more. I am absolutely clueless. So when you said, hey, let's talk about Mars, I got nothing for you, man. And I'm a little embarrassed of that. Well, they sent the new robot. How long does it take for that from launch to... Tactical is saying from June, so six to eight months. Okay. I got the launch date as July 30th, 2020. There you go. Tactical, you were wrong. Okay. If that's the right one. So six months, this thing um, left, uh, you know, six to eight months or whatever, left Earth, and it's a rover. They also got a drone up there. Have you seen that? Uh, no. Part of, yeah, see, like the first I time. said, I haven't seen any. Where can I go? Can you just log on? It's on the news, or I mean, no, like, I don't want to go to the news. Yeah, can yeah. I just go to like NASA.org and yes. they got it all laid out for me? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'll do. And um, they they released uh, obviously better quality video, mm-hmm. um, and it's the first time we've ever had that quality of video on Mars. So it is pretty so cool. So you dabbled in this? Are you? They're going to actually release another video today that will unveil the Perseverance rover as it landed on Mars, as seen from the rover itself. That's kind of cool. So that's the, happening in about an hour. The, All right. The only thing I'm down with that. So it is. I'm not going to miss this one. I missed the first one. I'm getting this one. It's a clear version of what we've already seen. And that's the oh, only disappointing they, part, yeah. <laughs> because of course it is. Oh, because so you're gonna you're gonna go through this whole thing about just, how HD 720 1080 not that much better. Yeah, is that what? it was like watching Planet Earth uh, in the 90s, as opposed to you know what I'm saying. No, like, I could make an argument. Same that, bird <laughs> dancing, it's just clearer. Yeah, oh, but I, I will make an argument though that the first time I saw Planet Earth was the best time I saw it, even though that that may have been it could have been 480, could have been 720. It was the best because my mind had yet to see anything. Yeah, like that it blown your mind. now yeah. everything i've seen it is all the same you're just incremental better yeah and so it's like yeah the pictures were hd or whatever you know high quality do you want to know why we should be in business less. together every time we mention planet earth you say same bird dancing and i can visualize <laughs> the exact scene you're talking about yeah yeah, yeah. um and, but what's and i don't think they've they even flown it yet uh but there's a drone there and I did see the news story where they were talking about how hard it was to engineer a drone that would fly on Mars because their atmosphere mm. is like one fifth of what our atmosphere is. And they described it like like blow into the palm of your hand <laughs> and then imagine <laughs> one fifth of that. Um, that's what we're dealing with. Even though I don't that's know what that stupid, means. it doesn't mean anything. I, I just did that. I, I have no yeah, idea yeah, what you're talking I did, about. I looked at the nerd. I said, come on, nerd. No one can understand. So what- one fifth of the strength of me blowing on my palm? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no one can gauge that accurately in their head because we're all idiots, nerd. Don't well, even no, describe it. There's So the <laughs> atmosphere there, there is, is, is there a weightlessness there? Like what, it, what kind of gravity do they have? Do they? How does it work? Um, don't How do know. you anchor yourself to the planet? They have gravity. Um, in fact, you don't know, do you? So uh, the I can Martian see a atm- look of fear in your eyes. Martian, no, <laughs> they said uh, this in the Martian. The Martian atmosphere is about one percent of the density of Earth's atmosphere. The extreme low pressure and cold of Mars, down to minus 130 degrees Fahrenheit at night at the landing site. will test the resilience of the drone and its electronics. So they don't even know how well it's going to work yet. 
Uh, they're doing the best they can. Uh, and so, do you hope for it to be a roaring success, or do you hope for it to explode and be a horrible failure? Well, I don't uh, obviously failure, but I don't yeah, know. I'm always failure. what they're even. I'm pro failure. I didn't. And part of the story too, they were talking about they're taking samples and uh, putting them in titanium like uh, tubes or whatever, and then somehow. Uh, they're gonna get them back to Earth. Like I think there's another drone that's it's scheduled to, to go there, land, and then th- this Grab rover. Grab the samples and yeah, this rover is gonna load the samples into the other drone, and they're gonna launch it back off to. The- I'll tell you now, that's what robots are made for, yeah. right there. And so loading uh, samples in another robot that flies back to Earth alone—that's pretty dope. Because I don't think we've ever done that. We've never landed something on Mars and then had it leave and come back to Earth. Mm-mm. Um, so then we'd get to test the, you know, dirt samples and stuff to see if there's ever been life on there. Do you ever watch these things at night, possibly while you're, you know, meandering around the kitchen, it's dinner time, maybe you got the news on and you mention it to your boys and then see that they have zero, uh, like, I still just amazing. And I'm like, do you have any interest in this at all? And absolutely not. No, no, no. They're, you guess, they, their minds are too. They can't even comprehend how we can barely comprehend. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So how, like, I'm all over the place. <laughs> like it's hard to comprehend how big our Earth is. And yeah. then, but the the one thing though, I do find like a little bit un, I'm like uninterested in is that, like they're talking about like oh let's see if there was ever been life on Mars and that would be a huge deal if we could prove it and stuff. But I'm like I already assumed that there was like and a lot of science does like. In some sort of capacity, like uh, bacteria, you know, like yeah, something yeah. even because Mars was a lot like Earth, and they know this through, I guess, geology and the study of the damn planet. But uh, they assume, and I guess because of the uh, geography of that a planet, they can see where possible water was, and that uh, basically that they're. Um, uh, planet shifted kind of like ours, and you know the Earth is constantly recycling itself mm-hmm. through our plate tectonics and stuff, yep. and we have a molten core. Yes, right? we do. So they think Mars had a molten core through whatever evidence, but it burned out. It stopped. And they, they when does ours burn out? Oh, it's there, there is a time because now ours we have a double molten core. Yes, gotta have that backup because redundancy system. Something like a a huge planet size. Uh, I guess dwarf planet or whatever rammed into molten earth or this is what the theory is uh, like you know one uh, billions That's of years ago. That's not a planet of dwarves either. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think people think that. Though. And then what we got out of that is it, it basically absorbed this other dwarf planet and then it became like a, a second, second core, core which they think is the reason why our core lasts longer. With and this core. Mars core. Dropping core. Uh, stopped or uh, like as burnt out or whatever, and therefore their planet died. And that's the theory, I guess. I have no idea if they've uh, proved that down to, uh, you know, kind of like the theory of evolution is like more of a a theory based on millions of pieces of evidence. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I don't know, but... It, I it would be cool like if they could do something that would move the needle for me something that we've never seen like the HD aspect is cool it's like whoa it's it's clear but it's just like I said it's clear of just the desert you know the landscape with the red do they owe us a novelty though. And what I mean no, by that of is of course, that it's stupid. That's just what idiots want. No, 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 no. <laughs> there, there sh- I feel like there should be something. I feel like if you're going to go and do this, you owe it to the entire world to do something extremely important to help society. And then you have to do something extremely stupid yes. to sex it up and get uh, our yeah, eyes yeah, on yeah. it. It's like sensationalizing. Why? Why? It was like when Elon Musk put his own car yes, yeah, in yeah, orbit. Yeah. Look, I realize that there's some real science yeah. behind that, but all I want to see is that yes, the yeah. guy looks like he's driving the car in space. They have to be smart enough to realize that the rest of us are idiots. Yeah, give us and some fun. I think that's why they brought gl- golf clubs up yeah, to the moon. I and agree. like, what the hell were they like, hitting golf clubs? They're like, Dude, this for the meathead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, they, had to, they had to get mm-hmm. uh, the world interested. And if they're just up there doing science experiments, I agree with that. And, like every, all of us would be like, do the golf, like jump in the air. Uh, yeah, do something. You know, like, uh, you know, uh, 
I guess they did a bunch of stuff, like uh, they brought stuff to throw. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, do throw something. Well, or... like, like do some weird stuff, like uh, like engineer some sort of uh, I don't know, a, one of those big novelty rings of firecrackers that for some <laughs> reason can execute itself on the on Mars. Yeah, yeah. You know, or give me, uh, or I don't know, th- uh, put a th- float a bear out into space. Just a stuffed animal right out of the stage. Just put a camera on him. I want to know, like, what would be, what would blow my mind and would get me super interested if, if Alien. We... He's going to say, what if they find a little creature or something? See no, through, it's... See Too through much? space the, suit. Well, the planet's been dead for so long. It's like, if they. See through space suit, astronaut Bush. If. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you want to get eyes on the prize. Yeah. You want to get everybody involved because they're all nerds, you know. Yeah. You're like female astronauts, no offense. They probably got But those are the them. like you know female astronauts are either gonna fly in a spaceship or they're gonna go on a trip, crazy love triangle, wearing a diaper, <laughs> trying to cling to some lost love, right? <laughs> They're either going to be genius or crazy, right? <laughs> I bet you a lot of potential astronauts and astronauts are, are crazy. Got, well, no, we got oh. mad at that one lady oh. because oh, now yeah. she's peeing in the diaper, driving cross As, country. Especially female astronauts because, like, now yeah. everybody it's can harder use that. Yeah, yeah. They it's harder it. for ladies to do everything, and you're going to pee in a diaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When does that movie come out? It, are they doing? Yeah. No, they're not. Yeah. Damn it! Who was supposed to be the lady that? That story is. Bonkers, dude. Ridiculous. It, uh, and it does prove that there is a thin line between the people that are the most intelligent and that they maybe can't function in yeah, easy, know. normal human relationships. The, if they found uh, a planet and were able to get somehow get a close-up telescopic view of it that was like Earth... And we're able to tell that there may like there's actually living things on there that were. I think that'd be. Terrifi- I don't know how. I think that'd be terrifying for most people. Like if you beamed a photo in, right? But just living like things you, could be anything. It could just be small, like, well, let's lumps. say you beamed in and you saw a series of strange rock structures, right? You think they're rock structures? They're not. They're buildings, and the beings crawling across well, the ground are like some sort of slug animal. It, I would be terrified, and I would insist through writing my congressman that we wage war against these beings until we've destroyed them through a series of well-placed nuclear missiles. God, it already came out. 2019. You'd have, you'd have to kill them, right? You got to kill all the. You got to go because you don't know if they want to kill you. Well, they, if they're just slugs, they're like you know because we all as- they have to do is see your camera and know that you're there, and then they're coming to get us. And what uh, constitutes intelligent life? Like uh, you know that I mean, there's. Dolphin are intelligent <laughs> to pigs a certain are extent. Pigs, yeah. you know, like, pigs are really intelligent. I mean, obviously, all chimpanzees and stuff like you, yeah. like, you get closer to human. Um, but I mean, even any sort of mammal, like if you found some sort of rodent on a different planet, a roach or bug or yeah. whatever, like that would be pretty interesting. Like that Mars would be roach? like whoa. Because we've never we've never had any proof it would, if it were of some, any life in any other planet. Yeah, the the creepiest thing that could happen would be. But for you, sure, there is. You throw right. the camera on there and you start seeing things that are recognizable because maybe this is a Just, a consistent pattern of 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 I don't know life. I don't even know well, how you would do that. But it's, it's also if you hear like you Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about it, it's like we know of the way life performs under. Uh, of what we know right like so like we know our type of life whatever that means i listen this is going into uh, above my intelligence level but you're talking about like uh life that has some sort of amino acid chain that you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like sure yeah we don't know how other beings or life forms yeah. could possibly function, yeah, it, live, it, it or like could be yeah. something that that it completely in our on our mind and based on the knowledge that we have would seem impossible. Right? Yeah, like there's some even life on, on our planet that like lives in molten like like that damn uh, what's that tiny little bear. The goddamn space bear. Oh, it, I know uh, what you're you talking know, about. Yeah, yeah. That okay? It's a, it's a tiny little yes, organism called like the tardigrade. Uh, the the what tardigrade, tardigrade. Yeah, yeah yeah it's water a tar- bear yeah. water, water, water bear. bear or moss piglet yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of like yeah. moss piglet better no, too hard to say uh, water the, bear just Daniel easy. calls his D <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> moss piglet <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> 
The uh, and apparently that thing can live in space and a vacuum and like no, a I can't molten even lava. Live in my underwear, I'm burning <laughs> up. <over time. laughs> but it, it performs uh, unlike anything that like uh, living that we know of. And so there's how things, much does it matter? I don't know what it does. Um, I think it just. I don't know how they make it or how it. Uh, yeah, like I want to know what it where, reproduces. Where is it in the in? Uh, where like, are they most found? Yeah, well, no, I mean, like if you're looking at the world and the world is a system that just right, we're all part of the system. Yeah, you know, we're all here and we all play our role. What is their role? What does it do? What is its purpose? That, Without it, would well, we start to notice our entire existence unravel? No, everything doesn't really have a purpose, but... It, What's the easiest we can run the world? Like, it, could we... Like, because, you know, you start... If everything starts... It's extinctually, it's, they start going ecosystem, away. Yeah, yeah it just starts falling apart. Like, there's what, things that are essential how, to the ecosystem. How easy now. can we run it like a chopper? No turn signals. We took away you know, the yeah. water bear. Like, yeah. if you said that... Because, like, you say, like, oh, okay, you, like, eliminate mosquitoes. Well, that would cause yeah. a horrible chain reaction exactly. where bats and other things that live off mosquitoes Probably would die. Bad, like, yeah. You know, and there's... there's I think there's very little things that don't get eaten or eat and that it would Just screw up there. DJ Khaled that. You have to have energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he knows. He don't eat no water bear. Every living thing, I think, has to, like, uh, intake and... It says uh, that they are nature's mm -hmm. pioneers, colonizing new, potentially harsh environments, providing food for larger creatures that Nature's follow. Nature's pioneers. Okay, yeah, yeah. I feel like last month I heard a lot of so people. everything gets eaten. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Even, even water the, bears. The small, yeah, Some yeah. scientists believe that they were the first animals to leave the ocean and settle on dry land. My God. Even, even like, are badass. These things are cool. Yeah. If you want to look into it, even like viruses and things like that, you know, like they're, they need a host and it's like they're... They, oh, they're, so you're pro-virus all of a sudden, <laughs> sir? There's also probably like <laughs> uh, the... Uh, eliminate certain amount of population in the wild like that that happens and I don't know. anyway i don't know what this thing in mars could do that would impress me but it's very little at this point yeah. <laughs> it was like i know it's cool that they got it up there and we're seeing hd and stuff and then they fly around the drone but i imagine it's going to be a higher point of view of the same red desert okay. landscape right here's what i think you, <laughs> what are we gonna see here's what i think they should do we have all of these great okay remember like i, th I think we, we we also know every single square inch of of mars based on Telescopes, and right? That, you know, so but like, like in order to make this interesting, like, well, there's a city that no, you know, you, they're not going to find it. You have to put some entertainment value into this. So you would have to get like if you really want to get people behind this, and if you really want children and young adults to become more and more scientists, you would have to get like your Adam Savages and your Jamie Heinemans, and you get them together, and you do when these things pop up, rather than just like not caring about it, you get all the networks to produce a special, and you explain it to us. Inter, you know, yeah. in, and use some entertainment. Dumb it down. Kind of like they did with the dumb inauguration, where it was like Tom hangs up there and they explained everything. <laughs> and they got all this stuff. I like, you got to beat me over the head with it. You so I know what the hell's happening. You, you only get what you get. Because I'm kind of stupid. You do have to dumb it down. Uh, also, we need to be in competition with Russia or something. Because without it, I just feel like, why are we doing it? What's the point of all this? Yeah, like, you want to be the best. In the name of science, you're gonna find some sort of microorganism that uh, that lived on ancient Mars, and that's gonna be, you know, like no one. Uh, oh, dude, I got it. Water bear fights. <laughs> Russian water bear versus yes. American water if, bear, like Rocky. If you don't find the dodo uh, alien that everybody sees in their mind, because we're all idiots, uh, no one's gonna be interested. If you find some microscopic uh, water bear, water bear. Yeah, and, <laughs> and yeah, people are like, oh, what is that? Uh, who cares? Isn't it's that like, the thing that looks like he's got a snoot? Yeah. Yeah, I don't That's like a, it. It's <laughs> off-putting. It looks like a little gummy bear, right? I mean, it has a little snoot. It has like a little with a snoot. snoot. It has a, a gummy snoot. bear with a snoot. A gummy bear with a snoot. <laughs> Basically me naked. But <laughs> 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 upside down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, All right, let's start. Oh, uh, oh bye-bye. Oh, water bears. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am repulsed by some of the things that I'm reading in our chat room from your favorite texter, Norm, who says, a little bush is good, but give me that landing strip. And that is horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> landing strip? Really? What is it, 1992? <laughs> 
Just so, but don't do anything. <laughs> so, you know, like uh, if, you don't, if you don't do anything, you have a bush. bush. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it just uh, com- no, no hair whatsoever. Why well, just leave a little bit of hair? Like I just want a little hair. <laughs> what about one? What if you want uh, one hair? No, no. Yeah. One yeah. long so hair. It's, it's I not- have one hair that will grow right under my eye, where there's lower. Not my eyelid, but right under my eye, like where my baby underlashes that are. That is odd. And it will grow. And if it goes unchecked, I kid you not, it will go three inches. And it's so wispy thin. It's not like regular hair. It's like the consistency of what dental floss would be for a small rodent. It is fine. <laughs> and if you grab it, you can pull it and actually pull my lid up. You can. No. L- m- it's insane. It's disgusting. Don't ever do it. Disgusting. So the reason why bushes bother me is well, just I full transparency. We started talking about Dave Matthews, who bothers me, and then Tom said, "You know what bothers me? <laughs> no, no, bushes." I'll no. Put him, so it's so if we're, no, no. if we're if you're at home, I hate Dave Matthews. That, Tom hates bushes. No, no, this is not that. I was gonna go completely different. Uh, route. I was gonna go the guitarist from uh, what's the guy? Guns and Roses. No, no, Slash. no. The um, uh, Jack Johnson. The Duff New, McKagan. New Jersey, America. Bon Jovi. No, no. I know you're talking about uh, Springsteen. Bru- yeah, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. When I see the guitarist, I'm like, what the hell is that? Because Little Steven. Little Steven Van Zandt. Yes, Little Steven Van Zandt. Little Steven Van Zandt. And I see him, and I can't take anything serious. Yeah. I'm like, and he's got the big dumb bandana <laughs> on his head. And you wear a goddamn big dumb bandana. That's true. No. You are the Little Steven of our show. <laughs> no, no. Little Steven. I don't wear the you're bandana. Little out. Steven's Rock and Roll Garage XM Series satellite radio. I I wear the bandana at home because I don't want to put product in my hair. <laughs> uh, I well, don't so wear it out. Little Steven. He no, doesn't wear product. Beret. He's on stage. He does it for his costume. I don't want USA, And you like to have tapestries no, off I of don't. your head. I don't. It, I just, I did, was never a Bruce Springsteen fan, So I, but uh, Sopranos, I watched the Sopranos, so now I can't. I'm like, Sopranos, why is he there? And right. I can't get past that. Well, Bruce hey. Springsteen is an acquired taste. I don't understand the appeal of Bruce Springsteen as much. You know, I, his uh, other nickname is Miami Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> there might be something to this. Oh maybe God. that's why maybe you hate him. Stephen Van Zandt. Yeah, I'm like, we're messing with me, so they killed my bird and ruined my life. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm gonna play in a band. So here's why. What's going on under that headscarf? Mm, I think he's bald. You yeah, think? a lot of times. Uh, Does he got a skull it then? Because there's some hair in the back, right? No, 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 no. He runs a low. He runs a low scarf, almost like a uh, modified <laughs> do rag. Uh, Brett Michaels had a low scarf. Had a bandana wig. Like, yeah, that he popped well, out. Well, it's like a bandana wig hat. It's a threefer. It's yeah. bandana, then wig, <laughs> then hat on top of wig. It's, it's, a, tri- so, yeah. it's a triangle. Yeah. Together, yeah. Right? It's the new tri corner hat. You know who else had a, ba- a bandana wig? Uh, Amazing Jonathan. Yeah. And, and when I wear it, I saw him take it off. I was like, oh! Yeah. And then I realized he was wearing it in here. <laughs> That's <laughs> a good wig. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't look at it. And then the I same. thought that thing's got to stink, right? Because yes. he had a smell the first the first time when he was dying. He's yeah, not yeah. dying now. Yeah, yeah. He's fine now, apparently. But yeah. when we saw him on death's door, there was the odor of death. I'm not saying he smelled bad. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying he did. Something. He smelled like somebody who wasn't going to be here very long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here's why I don't understand bushes. <laughs> because <laughs> so for me, there it's got to be one of two things. And if it's not one of those things, then function or I, fashion. Though. Yes. Function or fashion. Now, I don't know what function it would ever serve because it's not like it. Crumb catcher. No, 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 no. Besides from novelty, I'm talking about like it doesn't. It doesn't make the. I'm actually trying to think. We did this once before on the uncensored show, and I believe a doctor called in and said that we have hair in certain areas to keep certain things from maybe uh, cutting us or injuring us. That we have built-in areas of more um, body hair in order to for protection. Yeah, when we're nude and running the savannas, uh, that's we 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 all ran nude with Savannah. (laughs) I thought that was Tiffany. I had no idea about that. We also have golf bladders that are made to uh, break up rocks. And I don't have a gallbladder are... anymore and neither does know. Casey Musgraves I'm ta- after this weekend. I'm talking about in current day there's uh, seemingly zero utility unless someone can tell me uh, different. I there's no It doesn't make the experience better like uh, if you're talking about How would about you know though? Have you ever yes, uh, with th- Bush? Throughout uh, the 25 years of being yeah. with Crystal there's um, oh, some Bush eras? I think we're yeah. in. What are you in now? What you're in the, in? in the Royal 
roaring twenties. We're in. We're in that period where seemingly prohibition. Speakeasy, Zach. George Bush. Then the George Bush Junior comes later. It stays a while. Anyway, He'll be with the Bushes for a while. So then we get to the Clintons, and that's all landing strip. And then you go um, for like uh, cosmetic reasons, right? And I don't understand that either because for me, if you're going to shape it in any way, like shaping it into a landing strip or a heart or something, doesn't I don't I just what have was my that wife, for? I have my wife shape hers into just what appears to be. Boxer briefs, <laughs> and that's what, that's the style I like. I like a booty short, a little cheeky boy short. Because I, I don't know one guy that uh, has ever like looked at like a landing strip thing or some sort of like uh, bush art, I'll call it, and then set, and like had some high appreciation for it. Right? Well, Norm like, apparently is no, really yeah. into the landing Norm strip. Norm doesn't see any yeah. of it because he's a big oh. fat slob. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, so he'll just take anything. He can. So of course he yeah. likes yeah. anything. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm sorry, yeah. Norm. It's You're not the norm effect. I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'll always be in love with the first norm in my mind. Well, you built OG up, norm. You yeah. built up. See, what happened here, for the listeners that don't know what Tom's talking about, we're live on Twitch right now. Twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan Live. We run a full-blown, basically a TV studio out of here every single day, and you can watch our shows live. But Norm, one of our listeners that's in our Twitch chat room, he built himself up as a character for years upon years, and, <laughs> and, and you were all in, and now you're finding out, you're kind of chipping away at the exterior and kind of finding out the real of Norm, and you're, you're, you're not really satisfied with what you're seeing. So I heard one explanation <laughs> that I could kind of get behind, but then it, it went back to like, wait a minute, this makes no sense, is that I was told by a, a, a friend of mine one time, we were having a conversation about LASIK, uh, or not LASIK, sorry. Those <laughs> are your eyes. <laughs> I, <laughs> Ideal image. I like my wife to have a full <laughs> eye bush. And, uh, and then we were talking about how they could do laser treatments and stuff. And then all our... Uh, Woman friends were talking, girlfriends, and they- <laughs> Woman friends. <laughs> I was going to say girlfriends, but I was like, it sounded like I was trying to be, uh, anyway. The crow connection. The uh, And then one of our friends brought up the point that she's like, she didn't want to get it permanently removed just in case when she gets older and things start to get worse down there that she could grow <laughs> a bush to hide it. And then I was like, wait what's, a minute. Wait, what's going to happen down there? Yeah, I no, don't know. No one knows. Uh, yeah, like I no guess one's just like ever as you age, it's like Bird Box. It, it, well, things, things change, are getting younger. You look, you go blind, and you go crazy. Yeah, yeah. Things don't always stay the same. I guess it's just like her yeah. point was maybe things change, and then if it got uh, hideous or whatever, that she'd like to uh, have the option to cover it. She didn't want to get permanently. Uh, hair removal. Have the option to cover. It's not like filling in a. <laughs> it's not like filling in a swimming pool and behind I, your house. I made the comparison. I was like, well, that's like Seth <laughs> growing his ear hair out to, <laughs> to cover his grotesque ears. Oh, that ears. would be bad. And I'm like, that doesn't make it better. No, it's way, way worse. Yeah. So now you just got gross ears you know with ear hair. <laughs> I owe you an apology then, because if that is your analogy to yeah. combat my <laughs> being into it, yeah. I stand corrected. That's a damn good analogy. I just don't know what the... I don't know and either. Th oh, there I think I like it because in some weird way, there is something that I don't like about the stigma of of youth, maybe. Does that make sense? Right. I'm trying to clean this up and be, okay, you know, well, a, I've heard, be I, a good radio man. Okay, I've, I have a counter-argument to that, too. The stigma <laughs> of youth, to me, I'm just kind of like, I'm okay with it the way it is. So the Sorry. same group of ladies that I was having this argument with, uh, one of them did bring up, well, I don't want to look like a, uh, a, a baby. baby yeah. And then I'm like, if you shaved your whole body... You would not look like a baby. You look like a 33-year-old woman that shaved her whole body. I'm never going to be like, oh, my God, a baby's here. Like, I know that you're a 33-year-old woman that has no hair. No one's going to get confused. Your husband's going to be no, like, I, I can't it's, touch I you. I, mean, far, I don't want to be a pedophile. No, it's not that you're going to perceive <laughs> her as an actual baby. It's that... You know, it represents. Yes, it's more the, what it represents. The bush rep represents See, the maturity. You're taking it literal, like Maisie when I, when I say "don't do that," and no, then she's like, no. and I, I'm like, oh, "Okay, listen, I we're know, gonna play that game." I'm, I'm uh, you know, joking around a little bit, but I don't, I, I don't see like, oh, if I uh, completely, sh it has the element of. Uh, me being like uh, pre-pubescent or yeah. something, and then, but I'm like, but you look like 
you're in your 30s, so I just don't see how this would make it that much different where it all of a sudden becomes creepy for everybody involved because you have no hair down there. I think it's oh. just fine. Plus, we grew up in the 90s watching porno where there was, you know, in the 90s and 2000s where that was yeah, a fad. That was a fad. When, after that, after that fad, uh, it went hard to the other way. It was smooth, smooth, and then yeah. people would. There was a lot of body shaming going on. I feel like we're overcorrecting right now because of that. I feel like well, because back, it's back to the the B. No, I know, but because I believe <laughs> we, I think it's, a, I think it's overcorrection. We're not steering into it like you should. Hmm. I think we're yanking the the wheel to the right because remember, in the in the middle nineties to middle two thousands, it was nothing. Right. Right. Yeah. We're overcorrecting now. We're doing this. Ying, ying, ying. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, need yeah, to just yeah. everybody That's a personal chill preference, out. Whatever. Everybody, everybody just slow down. Let's just do. keep it in the middle. A little uh, yeah, bit. I just never understood. Gently the, turn into it. I mean, relax. if you're gonna, the, the if preference. you're gonna have something down there, at least manicure it a bit. You yeah. know, everybody, I think mean, everybody's happy. Everybody can, uh, unless you have some sort of uh, kink or something, because there right. are those people too. But. Um, I just don't, I never understood the argument. Like I like a little bit because, uh, you know, t- with the nothing, I get creeped out. A couple like, of howl. comments from okay. the, uh, chat room, uh, twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan live. Um, we have one person that said had a waxing incident. <laughs> Gunshine. Now the professional waxer tried to, and then I can't read that part, but you can just understand that there are things down there that are sensitive. She says, uh, I had to call the doctor and everything. That's bad. Oh, my um, God. Nair. Then we go down to this one, which is, uh, this ties into wrestling. My daughter has recently become up completely obsessed with wrestling. I'll be watching Elimination Chamber, the second half of it tonight with her. <laughs> what because is she's a, It's some pay-per-view that was on last night. We only get to watch half of it. She wants to watch the rest of it tonight. Basically, grown men locked into a big metal steel cage smashing each other, and she loves it. Okay. Um... Uh, Ghost of Manute Bull says Ric Flair was synonymous in the 1980s for being a lover of the hair down there. There's a story once that he kicked a woman out of his limo and told her, no flair or no hair, no flair. Woo! <laughs> and he kicked her out of the limo. Yeah, he was a crazy, wow, okay. crazy man, Ric yeah. Flair. He's an that makes me man. respect yeah. you less because give me a break. Like, you're going to turn, you want hair? Like, that's again, like, how does it make it better, Rick? How does it make these stairs doing better? It too. He was on last it, night, he's tapping his shoulders and wooing crazy. If anything, no uh, hair does actually feel better. That's the uh, thing. Okay, too. Like, there's that. an element of if we're you're just we're, we're gonna move on. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, what do we got here? Uh, voicemail. Uh, yeah, let's jump into some voicemails. They have a tendency to pile up, much like pubic hair. Let's try this one. No. Oh, I guess that one didn't work. Um, let's see. We'll go to. <laughs> Go. 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 I fully support ending every show with Tom saying, hello. Nah, stupid. We do need to do something about the way we end the show. Why? All right. Well, <laughs> we <don't have> to, <laughs> well I'm just saying, okay, has there I mean, been pushback? Have we decided? Know. No, there's been no pushback. <laughs> have we any... decided just to stay that? Are we keeping it here with the bye-bye? I don't know. It just seems uh, that's an. I'm just naturally yelling that I out. I kind of like it, it now. But I think it will pivot from there because okay. we'll get bored. Uh, you know, whatever's natural, I think. Uh, so, ke- you're, so you're saying keeping it natural? Uh, just kind of <laughs> let it grow out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. Mm-hmm. Uh, I gotta, we got to cover uh, <laughs> as this thing <laughs> ages. Cover the whole, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Makes uh. sense. Try this one. Hey, guys. Um, Tom or Dan is talking about. Anne of Green Gables and the scene where they encounter, uh, I haven't watched the show, but I believe Dan said it was a black man. And he was fascinated by it because they were, like they had never seen a person of a different race before, so they were treating him like an alien, not really in a racist way. And Dan was saying it was just a really good take on how that would go. Uh, And I think that's actually, I mean, that's, reality I listened to I did a Tom I didn't read but I listened to an audiobook on the Crusades um, and one of my most one of one of the most fascinating parts to me was when they encountered their first like black people because they were pretty close to Africa they were in like northern Africa area um, and it was just fascinating because during Roman times interacting with Africans was like Not commonplace, but Romans knew what black people were. But by the time of the Middle Ages, everybody had cloistered themselves off and you only knew your little 
local kingdom. And so they didn't even know, and they had you know, started to lose all the writings of Romans and stuff. Right, right. So they didn't even know that other races existed. So like a loss of actual history throughout the the years, almost like a reset button. Right. You know, mm. it's like, uh, who are these people? You know, like when... Tom fell asleep during that voicemail. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I was listening. <laughs> like I, I, I like this stuff. Well, like, they go through it even in, you know, you go through the uh, the big Epcot ball, and they start talking yeah. about libraries being burned down and right. loss of... Uh, uh, of knowledge and how ac- absolutely horrible that can be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and uh, so I'm sure he's going to say when oh, uh, when you uh, when they came across people, uh, you know, black people, they were free. They probably were like, whoa, what the hell? Like I've never even yeah, knew no, this existed. And, and he kind of got it right. And he kind of got it wrong. This particular show that I'm watching was a Netflix show from Canada called um, Anne with an E, and it's based on Anne of Green Gables, and it's really good. But I will say that there is racism in it. These people weren't like. Uh, it, it, like I don't want you to think that they were purely like, oh my God, look at this amazing black-skinned individual. We are so amazed. No, it was like, it was there was a negativity and there was racism, but there was there were certain people that were were more enamored. But the main vibe was a a level of racism. It it just seemed different that they they kind of took it from the standpoint of like an educator or maybe a child. And I don't think that in this particular, you know, story that they wanted to portray, they wanted to show you that without maybe the guise of other people throwing negativity on top of it with just pure, you know, children's curiosity it can be only that, you know? Yeah. Like, what yeah. is this human? Tell me about yourself. Well, that's because that is like there's a certain amount of natural, I guess, racism that is... Ba- like uh, I guess the basis is like not understanding and being curious and Ignored not knowing. It, yeah, it's like so. It's like even ancient human like y- they tended to like be afraid of other humans that didn't look like their group, right? For protection or something. I imagine like you know they would have their village and their oh, no, community. This, this and this is then happening they- right now in the show. You have this particular guy who's a, a main character. He's a black guy, but he's going to this particular area of I guess they're in Nova Scotia area, yeah. and he's going to this area called the Bog, which traditionally all of the black people live in. And he's going there because he's dealing with some white people that are being less than cool. Yeah, and then so there's that element, which is the start of like, hey, being suspicious of someone that doesn't look like you or whatever, based on old uh, uh, evolution where you just literally stuck with your, you know, uh, community and stuff, and other communities could be a threat to you. Your village, your clan, whatever you want to call it. It's like uh, the... I heard one time uh, listening to a book about evolution is that the reason why we see faces and clouds and like we see faces and things like uh, what are those ink dot uh, or those ink things? It's oh, like, like Rorschach. Tests. Rorschach yeah. is like and and we see faces first a lot of time. We see we like we want to put together like eyes yeah. and I see a it mouth and like, patterns on carpet. I'll see faces. Yeah, all and, the time. And it's because it's some sort of defense mechanism that we've evolved with because faces. Make and danger and our brains evolved to recognize faces first because that was the most imminent danger we could hmm. face. So whether it be another human or an animal, right. it's just we constantly look for two that's eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And that's why we see it in clouds and everything is it was a defense mechanism. And the, the better you see that, the longer you lived. Right. Because if you didn't see the face yeah, of the tiger, dead. then yeah. it'll eat you. Yeah, it'll eat you. And so, like, there's a lot of weird brain things like that that a lot of humans share that they're ingrained into us. It, it starts complicating things like race and things like that, Like where it's like deep down inside, are you cautious of someone that doesn't look like you? And is that racism? Is that so, like, obviously you use your brain to understand that, okay, no, it's a, I shouldn't be cautious of, uh, of this person because they don't look like me. Obviously it's just a regular person. It doesn't mean me any harm unless they, they you know, like mm-hmm. you can start to think through it, but if you go back into those like ingrained things, uh, you know it starts becoming like, oh, oh, there's some. So what sort you're of... saying is racism is in your blood. I no. got you. No, 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 no. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Well, I he was talking about eyes. This time, <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, remember uh. we were talking about taking your eye exam online yeah. and whether that was a real thing or not. Well, hey Sam, Tom, Dan Butler, it's Christina. Christina, sorry. <laughs> Um, I heard my little message that I left the other day that I completely forgot that I left. Um, yes, you certainly can get your eyes checked online. 
I did it recently. It was super easy. It was way cheaper. Um, Warby Parker is a really good brand. They will do it. Um, also, any of the contact mm-hmm. companies will do it. Um, you really do not need to go to the eye doctor. Her <laughs> stream just farted <laughs> real loud into her office chair. Yeah, that's what it sounded it. like. Did you hear that? Listen. Um, also, any of the contact <laughs> companies. Oh, <laughs> yuck. Oh, Chris my Dreamer. God. You got a wet butt. <laughs> Stop Stop it. You Lord. farted in your office chair. I heard yuck. it loud. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Uh, that's what we do. To that, the, that's we all we find do. the people that like our show, yeah, and then we're they like, want to do content for free. How do we free? make them feel bad? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, um, what was so you saying? I don't know. She, no, you can do online eye exams. She was oh. busting. You said that it was impossible that you can't do an eye exam online and then get your glasses. And Sam was saying absolutely you can. Kastrima was basically calling in to, I guess, drunk, drunkenly confirm that yeah. Sam is correct. Okay, so there's some, and then what? How does that work? Uh, they've without the damn big old. Uh, that I don't know. I don't know how I, it works. I, I haven't done it yet. I might robot. do it though. Do since... you have her number? Yeah. Let's just call her out of the blue, like right now. Okay. I don't even care what she's doing. Let's just try and call her because she can't be doing much. Every time she leaves a message, it's like it sounds like she's just in her pajamas. So you could do an accurate online. I don't think so. I'm... Everybody in the chat room is like you. Uh, last time we talked about this, skeptical. No way. The doctor's going to tell you to come in. This is a scam. Burr, burr. <laughs> All right. It's ringing. All right. Oh, hold Maybe on. Line? if it's line one, just if you if your eyes aren't that bad, if it's just like a reading glass. Scenario. Hello. Chris Dream, it's Tom and Dan. We need your help. Okay. <laughs> You're live on the show right now. Are you in the middle of something? Can you talk? No, I can talk. Okay, good. Uh, Did we wake you up? Oh, no, we're fine. <laughs> okay. So, this eye exam thing that you called in about, how do they do the, how do they look at your eyeballs? Um, you do it on an app, and you, um, hang on, let me put my headphones on so I can hear you better. Oh, I really bothered you. I'm so sorry. No. I farted again. <laughs> 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 oh. Sorry, hang on. Oh, it's all right. And then there's the wet of it. <laughs> like, oh, was that spongy sound? <laughs> the hot breath. I hate that. I call it. My daughter calls him dragon's breath. Okay, I can hear you better now. <laughs> okay, we weren't saying anything about you. So, um, how do you check the eyeballs? They do like um, it's just through the app. Like you hold the phone and. It looks at your eye and, like, does it that way. I don't know it's about so that. Easy. But is it real? Because <laughs> Tom's saying that, and the chat room well, is saying, can, that can, they feel like a doctor would not be able to really and truly do all of the things. Like, they did this thing on mine where they have to poof air into it to make me cry, and then they take a picture of the back of my eye to make sure there's not <laughs> cancer. Well, that's and, a different thing. I, yeah. I don't think you could do that. I mean, she's just talking about general, like, reading yeah. Uh, your That's your arch enemy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you have to every year you have to get a new prescription. So I just do it online. I go through Warby Parker or Contacts, 1 800 Contacts, I think is it, it is. And yep. they were very easy to work with. And you just hmm. use your phone. So I'm so skeptical, easy. but I think I'll do this tonight. So I went to a doctor and they told me some sort of prescription number. It's very light, uh, but they gave it to me. Why do me. you have to say that? Uh huh. Is it is it yeah. bad if you have a heavier prescription? Well, it, oh, you're I'm, more. Yeah, yeah. You I'm see what's blind. Yeah. You see what's you're, happening? Well, you're, it's a lo- what's your numbers? <laughs> you're more it's just like, saying, <laughs> I only dabble in. I've only done pedophilia once. I'm just saying, and uh, there's there's a scale and everything, and my eyes are better than Samantha's, right? True. Like, so I don't know. There is yes, uh, there's 100%. an absolute I, better. Who's <laughs> got the best eyes here without glasses? Well, Either Butler, Butler, Butler probably, yeah, right? Because he wears fake glasses. I don't think That's me. That's true. He does wear it, fake it ain't gonna glasses. Which me. makes me mad. I got glasses. Hey, uh, Chris Trima, did you know that Butler has to wear glasses his wife no, he, makes him wear? <laughs> he does, no, he wants what? to wear it. Yeah, they're no, he blue wear, bloggers. Why? He they, just wears like glasses, but they're just a... They're for fashion. Yeah, they're clear <laughs> like glass. No, they're, they, lock, they block the blue light from his computer. His oh, wife yeah, makes yeah. him wear them so he doesn't get eyeball oh, cancer. Oh, my gosh. That's ridiculous. I know. So He's such a chopper. But, I know. But anyway, <laughs> he's the worst. So what, what I'm, <laughs> she's just agreeing with me. Though. So so Samantha, Samantha, do you know yeah. your prescription yes. number? Yeah. What is it? Negative three point seven five. Whoa. So if so if Six Samantha takes blind. the app uh, test, will it come back negative three point seven five? You know what I'm saying? Will it be as accurate? Yeah. 
Yes, it was very accurate. Mine is, I'm actually negative 3.75, and then my other eye is negative 4. So, we're sisters. Um, So, yeah. um, I don't know what mine is. I was very pleased with the process. Uh-huh. So right. there's I like no not having to go somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> well, hey, thanks for letting yeah, us bother you. I just called you out of the blue to bother you. But, hey, I appreciate the, you being so cool. You're the best. Oh, thank you. I love you guys. Well, we love you, too. Are we talking to her anytime soon? We'll have to schedule her, yeah. Oh, Chris Dream, during the eye yes. exam on the app, does it ask you to read, like, um, just like a regular eye exam where you're reading numbers, an E5 or 5 or P or whatever? Nope. E5P? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think they did that. It was just like, yeah, I think they did. I, I, I'm trying to remember. It was like a year ago that I did it. What? But, yeah, like you put your phone there and they are like, blurry out things and you have to look at them and say the letters and stuff and then they take a picture of your eye and they're like okay there's your prescription huh so it was really cheap too it was a lot cheaper i think the reason it was cheaper is because it doesn't work (laughs) (laughs) but anyway we have to test it it. all right we'll let you go hey thanks for your time okay all right no problem love you guys love you too bye bye oh god oh we should just test it with Samantha's. Uh, like yeah. Samantha knows about, her prescription. I'm about due for my eye exam, honestly. Just, just uh, do it through the app one day, and uh, you gonna pay for it? Well, how much? Uh, through the there? company? I don't know. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, like uh, how much money? What if be? she ends up blind from this? Are we on the hook? No. I want to know what. <laughs> seriously, we're gonna protect our company. I'm not gonna have her. She does it, and then she comes in no. blind. Next thing you know, no, she's too so crazy. Be rich anyway. Like uh, so, the uh, best thing gonna happen to her is she goes blind. Uh, wow! I don't know. You're rich. You could be. I can't look at my beautiful husband. I don't want to think that. of how good but food really would smell, though. You know, because <laughs> yeah, the yeah. other senses get really good. Yeah, yeah. And it's not. It looks okay. I just went to the one eight hundred contacts one, and it says renew your prescription for just twenty dollars. Skip the trip to the doctor's office. It's only twenty dollars. That's insane. Right. Then I'm doing it. Then I'm doing it. Yeah. For every time sure. I go, it's like two hundred eighty dollars. That's insane. You know what I don't like? Uh, oh. <laughs> It says um, this is gonna insult a lot of people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it tells you to stand ten feet away from your device and then say the letters out loud. But anyone could cheat, right? Yeah, I'd cheat and then be like twenty twenty. <laughs> <minutes and 20. laughs> That's a problem. I can't. Uh, I just want to beat it. I don't want to actually know the truth. Um, I think I've said this before, and Daniel, I think was with me, but it was a different time, so you may not be with me now. When someone says they're blind, right? I. In my mind, oh, I know what you're gonna say. As a kid, and through growing up, and even now, I Stevie ex- Wonder expected to be pure pitch yes. black, no nothing. Yes, not like varying degrees of blindness. Like you know, you you squint your eyes out, make it real blurry. Where it's like you see lights and people like that's also considered legally blind. Oh, that's what I have and, when I don't have my contacts in. And uh, and people could say like I'm legally blind. I am. But, I can't drive or anything. <laughs> But yeah. without the context, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so oh, could you claim you're legally blind? Yes, I don't like. It. Yeah, I don't like that either. <laughs> because because legally blind, I can't see like black, nothing. I can't see like six don't... inches in front of me. If you're blind, you're blind. If you have yeah, poor yeah. eyesight, that's different. Yeah, but right? if you took out your contacts and eyes just started running at you, <laughs> I just see, see colors it. coming towards me. Like just a blob of yes. colors. Then you're or, racist because I don't see color. If you took <laughs> off, okay, hold on. If you took off your your contacts uh-huh. and me, Butler, and Daniel stood in the lobby, could you tell us apart? Maybe by height. Yeah, by our bushes. Well, not legally <laughs> blind. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of that. Liam, pitch black. See Depends nothing. how far you are away from me because uh, you could all just be one big blob. I think you are stealing, uh, uh, what is it called? Cultural appropriation? Yeah, that's uh, uh, of uh, the stolen le- valor. Of is, the yeah. legally blind. It's stolen valor. Yeah, yeah. The actual blind. Because by claiming you're legally blind, I don't- I don't, I don't go around telling everyone you I'm get legally a, blind. Can you get a oh. handicap placard? You should. I don't know. I should, right? You should get one because you could use that in- everywhere. Yeah, I, I think- Seasons 52. Like, uh... Trick shots. <laughs> it's like claiming <laughs> if you lost the tip of your finger that you were an amputee. You're <laughs> like, I don't know. You yeah, know no, I'm with you. An amputee yeah. got to be full, like, your foot well, or what hand if you gone. Have, what if you're hearing impaired to the point where you can't hear anything without hearing aids? You can't say that 
Well, hearing impaired is different. It means, than deaf. Yes, because you're not saying the you're boy, not saying so we're blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you can say legally deaf, right? The same as legally. I've blind. never heard anybody say legally deaf. By yeah. the way, that I think was. Cra- I think we have a BDM that is. It was the yeah. absolute worst of those movies. There was legally blonde, <laughs> legally right. blonde too, and then legally deaf was not good. Yeah, if you if you claim you're deaf, I want the absence of sound. Legally deaf is a thing, by the way. Uh, yeah, but I bet it's on a spectrum, and people could be like, "I'm yeah. legally deaf." My pop up was probably legally deaf. But there. I've never. I don't hear people say that. Normally, people will be like, "I'm deaf in one ear," or that person's deaf. I've never heard somebody go like, "I'm legally deaf." I mean, I can hear <laughs> some things, but you yeah, know, yeah, 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 they like, do it with a blind. Yeah, I've never lot. heard somebody. I'm say telling that. you, we have a BDM. You all know her. No, I'm not saying it's <laughs> it's not. She'll a, scream all over a corporate time cruise show. Because <laughs> oh yeah yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah, but that's I, not legally yeah, well, deaf. She just goes, I can't hear. You know, like she never. <laughs> I've never heard anybody. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you can. And she's like, ah, I can't. <laughs> I've never heard any. Wasted. I'm just saying, I've never heard anybody using the term legally <laughs> yeah, deaf. I'm not saying it's not a thing. Blacked out drunk. <laughs> I can barely hear. Up. Blacked out drunk. <laughs> I got beer <laughs> bottles in my ears. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyway, uh, bye bye. <laughs> Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Dan. Tom. Uh, Jobs, buddy. Mm. Occupational stuff. Hey, guys. So it's Jessica and Justin, and we're calling in because on the way back home from Gatlinburg, we were listening to an OG show, and Dan was doing that bit where he explains how he wants all of his occupation people to be i guess is i don't want them to be that way i just that's where you visualize i can visualize the person and i can create like i can draw a stereotype Mm. in my brain Mm. of what i want that person or what that person should or might typically look like Mm -hmm. something like that how you would explain it um and you guys should totally bring that back because it was hilarious yeah and uh go bucks there you go. No. That's an old voicemail. Uh, it was, <laughs> I think, but I think that one actually was right before right. the yeah. the Super Bowls. Taxi driver. What do you want that? Uh, mm, taxi driver. Well, it, but that's different. He, around here, taxi driver. Most of our taxi drivers around here, at least that I've taken, mm. are from a Caribbean or uh, Haiti. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. had a lot of Caribbean drivers. Haiti, mm. normally very skinny. 5'6 uh, yeah. to 5'8". Um, very skinny, handsome, very, very um, dark features, mm. skinny, polite, car smells tropical, you sit in the back, bottle of water, it's warm, don't like it, music is <laughs> best of Maroon 5. Ooh, okay. There you go. Um, person that takes your ticket at a movie theater. Um, small woman has a deformed left arm <laughs> where only three of her fingers, which are bright pink peek out the sleeve she will take your ticket she also has a walker or a cane of some sort she has burgundy pants on a white shirt a black tie and she has her hair in a some sort of an up bun with glasses that are purple and clear and she got them from warby parker person that works at a roller coaster some sort of theme park um but that operates the control board Ah. Um, at a theme park that usually, you know, the, you can see them. Uh, they're usually in the right or left and the front. They 17 year old boy, dark hair, uh, glasses, looks like a chubby Harry Potter. And he has his, <laughs> his, uh, what would the one that I'm picturing is dueling dragon styled costumes with nothing but fuzzy bunnies all over it because he's doing his own laundry for the first time since getting his own job and living in the back little, um, Guest house of uh, his parents' uh, home in Winter Park. Toll booth operator. Oh, that's an easy one. Mm-hmm. Old man who wears visor, white hair, lots of copious white ear hairs poking out. Mm-hmm. And he has uh, the strange... I hate old men that have really white arm hair. Off <laughs> uh, <laughs> footing. Uh, also, I don't know uh, how I just realized this. But, like, this was something I didn't know until my... Uh, God, it had to be in my 30s, which is uh, rare, I think, to go that long without knowing this is a thing. But I didn't know that 
when men got to a certain age, and I think maybe it happens to women too, their leg hairs blow off. And they, I, know, I didn't they have smooth either. leg hair. D- no, or they have smooth legs. They have no leg I hair. Still, what? Is- I still do, do not know this to be true. This is something that you told me, and then I asked you if that's true. And then you just say it is, and I just assume because you, I don't think you would lie to me that it is a true thing. But, <laughs> but you and I have seen a bunch of men from like the age of sixty plus, where if you look at their calves, they're a whole leg. They're, there's no hair. There's no. They're smooth. Yes, you get to. It cer- does say as you age, your leg hair may become thinner and start to fall out. Yes, I want that now. Not to bust them out, but uh, Paul mihani has got no leg Smooth. hair. Oh, so have. just saying his last name <laughs> won't let people know who he is. Everyone Tommy. knows. I guess I should have just said his first name. <laughs> if you <just> said Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I, guess, I, guess I should have just said I got a buddy Tony that could have brought it out of the one. A lot of that's only there could only be one person. <laughs> Well, I guess it could be a. You there's probably it. other Paul Meadows. The worst part is you did it, and I uh, laughed like I'm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "This is great." Because I didn't really care about yeah, insulting him. <laughs> Does Tony <laughs> know that his leg hairs are gone? Yeah. yeah he doesn't like to talk about it. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I don't know. know. He like flexes. Well, he's got well, but he's got big. You. <laughs> what no. saves Tony? He's got big, gigantic <laughs> mambo cap. It's like a big turkey leg. Yeah, yeah. They got those Which veins in makes... them. They got veins in them like Sylvester Stallone's arms. <laughs> yeah. Vascular yeah. hell. Because so that he needs to get some koi fish tatted on him. It's like a bodybuilder <laughs> where they shave their arms because it makes yeah. more definition. Like he's blessed by beautiful calves. But I saw other old <laughs> men and my pop pop. Like I realized this later. Like my pop pop had no leg hair. Yeah, and stuff. Like he was That's in his eighties. Still there. Mighty pretty hairy. It'll, yeah, yeah. You you still got 20 more years, and then it'll all blow off. Now, yeah, what age does it start? It has to do with circulation, which is sad. Yeah. Right? And and my feet like, are well, I think super it, cold. it also has to do with uh, testosterone. My, my feet are super cold, and I feel like I have that Ray- Raynaud's disease, the one that I know Tiffany has, has oh, had yeah, it, yeah. And, and I know certain my mom had it, and I think I have it because mm. I sleep with six blankets every night. <laughs> yeah. well, that's fine. It's just you got cold feet. How do, you guys, how do you guys sleep at night? Are you guys pajamas? Are you shirt? It depends. Yeah, I wear a shirt, a V-neck shirt. You like wear a like, shirt to bed? Yeah. That's weird. V- That's old man. When, when old man, yeah. white V-neck? Yeah. If you wear a shirt to bed, you're old man. Yeah. yeah. I wear old man V-neck shirt and then boxers. Okay. Or, yeah. Butler, what do you wear to bed? Uh-oh, he's oh, already, he's already he's in bed. He's asleep. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I tell you, <laughs> it's nap time. Have you not, uh, <laughs> he takes an hour nap right before he leaves. <laughs> don't wake the baby. <laughs> Do you wear socks, Tom? Or no? No, no. because no, you don't ever wear I don't socks wear so- in general. Yeah. So- I hate socks. Dude. I hate all things on my feet. They're like heat muffs. Yeah. And my feet get too hot. I'm like, God, get them off my feet. Or Do either of you guys ever dabble in sleep, uh, sleeping naked? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I sleep naked sometimes when I get too hot, and mm-hmm. I do like it, but then I always go back and forth. Like, I'll sleep naked one night, and I'll be like, man, this is the way to sleep. I think Because I, I think there are people that say you should sleep naked, like mm-hmm. it's more comf- comfortable to kind of free air your body, out. air things out. But like the next night, I feel like I shouldn't sleep naked because I feel like if something happened and I needed to help my family, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, I, that I, I would, feel mm. too vulnerable uh, I can agree naked. With that. It's like uh, Butler, what jump up and fight. Uh, Boxers. So he wears a shirt too. Boxers and a tank. Does your boy wear a shirt? No, just I don't wear. I don't wear a shirt either. I uh, I've slept without shirts. Uh, it just uh, it becomes a uh, you know. I just used to the V neck. I put that on. And then uh, that's weird it. because when you get home, don't you just walk around in chubby shorts and no shirt? And then you put a shirt on and go to bed. And no, when the summer I do is hot. Uh, now in the winter, I get home, I change out of my shorts and shirt, Your business shorts, into another <laughs> okay. into my home shorts. Do you guys do lounge? I do lounge wear. Yeah. And then I come V-neck. home, and then I'll try. I try to exercise, and then I try to go right to lounge wear. And Maisie gets in. We all get into lounge wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a house. You know. Yeah. And now it's I've ruined so many of my shorts from because the va- the vagina has a pH <laughs> and that it will bleach the bu- if you have colored underwear right. it will bleach out the crotch of your underwear 
See, that is a thing. So don't mm-hmm. feel bad, ladies. Mm-hmm. That thing's active down there. Like, yep. Because I'm so. I read that on the Facebooks. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I don't need. It's making the rounds last week. Yeah, yeah, it was funny. I, I get home and I'm dressed in like my uh, work shorts and stuff, which are like the ones without stains on them. <laughs> and then, um, then sometimes I'll... they got stains on them. Too. I know because I've ruined them all because I get it's home the, and then I'm the... like, start doing something. And then I go to the garage, I'm pulling something no, out. No. And then I and ruin... you haven't changed. And, I have, and then I'm like, oh, I ruined <laughs> Like, And I've done that to everything. Can I, tell you I immediately start doing something. Can I tell you something that. I don't know if you'll believe this or not. I know Samantha probably will, and Butler probably will as well. Yeah. I have never had a business meeting or a walkthrough with you with a person of some influence that you have not had on the left side deodorant on your love handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be the way you put your shirt on. You have to, have, like, from that, if I were a detective, I could break down your body chemistry to see how you actually put your shirt on. There's got to be a way you do yeah, it yeah. every time. It's not on the right side. It's <laughs> always the left side, right yeah. where his... Now, he doesn't really have love handles anymore. He looks great. But right where your love right. handle would be, yeah. he has one white stripe of deodorant, and it's there every time. <laughs> And I want now, I'm in well, it, and I'm so curious about how you put your shirts on. How does it get on just that one side? It's it's more insane because than you even think. Because it starts <laughs> oh, great. it starts earlier than you. It starts <laughs> it starts when I I get that and I finally get fed up and I scream. I can't take this anymore. I got to <laughs> buy new deodorant because my deodorant ran out. And then Crystal finally buys me a new clear deodorant. Okay. And then I run through that for a certain amount of time. And then I get to the bottom and then I say, I got to remember to order deodorant. And I do, I say that for months. You can get like a subscription so they'll just mail it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I, I can fix a lot of these problems. Okay. Uh, there's so, a solution. Don't. I just, I, I say, I got to get this. And then I immediately forget as one second after and I never do it. Then I finally switch over to my wife's oh, deodorant. Oh, Butler took a picture of you the other day. Secret? Wa- when yeah, we were secret. walking. Through. White chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> and then every you put time on the crow secret. Yeah, yeah strong I, enough for a man. I but put made on, for a crow. I put on the <gasps> white, uh, it, uh, chalky yeah. secret. It's and, better than what my, my mom and dad used to wear white flaky tussy brand deodorant. And every time I put it on, and I'm like. Gee, damn it. It's going, <laughs> to, it again. It's it. going to get the goddamn deodorant on my uh, my work shirt. And, it does. And then I think to myself, I got to put the shirt on in a way I don't get deodorant or on. Or put the shirt on and then go underneath and then, then deodorize. I can't do that because I'm so Too muscly. stiff. Oh. I can't get my arm. How tight are your shirts? Wait, <laughs> you, you can't. Hands. You can't. Now under, well, it gotta go under and yeah. pull out my tight because my shirts are they're fitted. Well, yeah, they're fitted. tailored. They're tailored. So I gotta pull it out and put. So and, and then then you're stretching out your shirt. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to stretch out my. So then I'm like, please, I'm like, put this on. Please. <laughs> and then I'm like, what if I just and then I go, and I go yeah, to pull that. They're always on the left side. Well, I try. Took a picture of it. I try <laughs> so hard. Then I scream. Why or do you I can live get the like aerosol, this? The aerosol, the aerosol. Yeah, that's deodorant. what I use. Is well, that killing the again, earth? Because I only use aerosol deodorants <laughs> because I I was going to offer myself up as basic uh, gym school trash. Yeah. <laughs> I use straight up teal degree. I've used it for fifty one years, and I've only been alive forty four. <laughs> yeah. I use the standard aerosol deodorant. It's the same one that I, when I was in gym class and you heard this. <laughs> when you heard that in Jim, uh, every uh, scream crazy. Mm. And now, as a professional businessman working with you, <laughs> aerosol deodorant. Trash I, need, man. I need to do that. I, like the, the I can't live like no, this. It's like, again, every day on my shirt. How can it and be? And you a jumbo aerosol can. The can of deodorant's bigger than I am. I'm holding. <laughs> It's fog up the entire, you know, and it leaves that lingering <laughs> fog. <laughs> yeah. The whole, yeah. And every time I do it, I say the same thing. No spray, no lay. No spray, no lay. Because <laughs> I'm that corny. Bye-bye.